Hey, I'm Rod Bergeron. Normally I make art videos. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to fix a broken chair leg. Everybody has one around the house. Let me show you how to fix it. It's quick, it's easy, and it's super cheap. Let's do it. Okay, so this particular instance is not a broken chair leg, but it's a broken chair back. And you can probably see that. It's broken really roughly there. Uh, but it does fit back together really, really super nicely. Let me show you from the other side. So you'll see here, it's broken right there. If I take that apart, you'll see. Somebody had a hose clamp holding that together there. That's what those marks are from. And you'll see the little tiny piece is missing. So if you can get all the pieces, get all the pieces and reassemble them into place. If it's simple like this, it's uh, much easier to deal with. So the mechanics of what it is that we're gonna do here today will work on uh, whether this is a, a back like this or it's a regular chair leg, any kind of a rung on any kind of a wooden chair. Um, first of all, you need to get this all clean. So I'm lucky this one here doesn't really have any glue on it. I can see where there was some glue on it right there. You can see, but it all fits back together nicely. Okay. So if this had a whole bunch of extra glue laying on it, you'd need to get that off. And the best way to do that is no detergent or chemical or anything. Just take a regular X-Acto knife or any kind of a sharp knife and pick off whatever glue you can get off. You can see there's a little bit there, but I've taken... I've taken most of this off um, just with my fingernail to tell you the truth. I also have a fairly sharp knife and I took a little screwdriver, but it honestly, it took me two minutes to get the glue off there. So just make sure it sits back together nicely. Okay, if it gets back together nicely, you're ready to go. Now, if there was a whole bunch of pieces that were all splintered, you'd need to glue each individual splinter back on to make them all fit together nicely. Um, you can do it if you don't have all the splinters, but you would need to get some wood filler or something to fill in the holes. So I'm going to use glue and I have uh, two glues that I regularly use. This is Gorilla Wood Glue. Okay, you'll see it says, it actually says wood glue on it. Okay, the other glue that I use most often is uh, Weld Bond. There's nothing wrong with the Gorilla Glue. They both hold just as good. I have them both, so and I've used them both. So whichever one you have at hand or you can get. You don't want to use something like Elmer's School Glue. That's just not going to work. Or uh, like a glue stick. That's not going to work. It needs to be something like these two glues. Um, these are, you know, not super expensive. Um, and will last for years and years and years. So don't get something stupid like school glue or you know that Elmer's school glue or any of that kind of stuff. That's just not gonna work for you, all right? Not gonna work. Okay, so besides the glue, you're gonna need a couple of other simple tools. Drill, this is a cordless drill, but any kind of drill will do it. And a drill bit. All right, and um, some dowel. That's basically the same thickness as the drill bit, okay? So um, you can get this at any hardware store. These dowels, uh, like a three foot long piece of this is under a dollar and uh, you can get a drill bit to fit it there. Um, you can probably get that drill bit for about a buck and three feet of that dowel for about a buck too. So not very much money cordless drill, um, any kind of a drill will do. It doesn't have to be a cordless drill. And then I have this little uh, hatchet thing. I just use the hammer end of this, but I'll show you why we're gonna use that. So that's all you really need to do this. Um, I also have these clamps that I'm going to use, uh, you know, just a regular uh, clamp. Uh, if you didn't have the clamp, you can just use um, regular, ordinary, everyday, um masking tape to hold the hold the repair together once we get it 
okay? So that's all the tools that you really need for this. Okay, so, so before we glue anything together, we have to look at where our repair is going to be and figure out um, the angle that we're gonna put the drill bit in, okay? So for this particular repair, I want it to go in this direction. So you can do that by, you know, you can do that by making, you know, look at it, you can make a mark on here. So you can actually take a pen and go, I'm gonna put a hole here and I'm gonna put a hole here. You're probably gonna drill two holes at least. See that little piece just came apart there? So we're gonna glue that. I'm glad that came apart, that's a good, that's a good example, all right? But anyways, we're going to um, put some glue on that. But you wanna look at all these things, make sure all these haven't come apart before you start to do anything, okay? So I'm just gonna get my weld bond out. And um, I'm just gonna put, okay, I'm just gonna get some weld bond out. So I usually just take like a regular, um, this is just a post-it note. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on my post-it note. And that's all the glue I'm probably gonna need for this. Close your weld bond back up, or it'll take forever and a day to um, open the can back up. So I'm just gonna set this right here where it's, I got easy access to it. I'm gonna take the end of my little piece of dowel, and I'm gonna put some glue on the back of this piece that came off here earlier. And you don't need a lot of glue. You need enough glue that it kind of presses out the edge, okay? But you don't need, you, you don't need buckets and buckets of glue for this. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that back into place right there. And then I'm just gonna take the rest of the glue that I have here and I'm just gonna start at the top and I'm gonna put it in every nook and cranny that I can kind of get it into. And I'm gonna need more glue, aren't I? So just put a little bit more glue on my little post-it note here. I'm using a post-it note because that's what I had on hand, but you can get just a regular piece of paper. So again, you wanna slide this around wherever you can. Get it in all the nooks and crannies that you can get it into. And remember, you're gonna have some of this squeeze out, okay? You might have a lot of it squeeze out, actually. I got a little bit on the seat there. I'll just pick that up. Okay. I'm just gonna set that over to the side. Now, this is where if you had the tape, if you were using the tape method, you would just put your tape, you would put this back together, okay? Let the, let the glue squeeze out there and then wrap your tape around it, okay? I have the clamps, so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna put a clamp sort of between those two dots that I had on there before. So I see there's one dot there and there's one dot there. I'm gonna put the clamp in between those two. And I'm just gonna squeeze the clamp until I see a little bit of the glue come out all the way around. And I hope that shows up on camera. I'll zoom in there. But you can see how that glue's come out. That's exactly what you want, okay? No more than that. So if you were taping this, you would just hold it really really tight and tape that. Okay, the next part is uh, the drilling part. Okay, so I fixed, like I'm gonna tell you, honestly, I fixed a thousand things like this. And um, gluing it is okay, but having some kind of a mechanical attachment, and that's why I have this drill bit and this little dowel, some kind of a mechanical attachment will make it so much better. Okay, like a hundred times better. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna make two little holes and I'm gonna take my cordless drill here and I'm gonna put my drill bit in. Okay, 
Put my drill bit in, and I'm just gonna make two quick holes, okay? So I know the first hole is here. And I gotta go down on a bit of an angle. Pretty certain that I drilled into my um, clamp, but that's okay. It's just a clamp. Now I'm gonna put another hole here. And I missed the clamp that time. Make sure there's no debris in there. So you can just take this, work it in and out a couple of times. Okay, like that, that's that. Okay, so the dowel that I used before that I had the glue on, I'm gonna get a little bit more glue here. And I'm gonna get lots of glue, lots of glue on the end of that dowel and then I'm gonna stick it in the hole. Then I'm gonna take it out and then I'm gonna let some glue run into the hole. Then I'm gonna take it out and let some glue run into the hole and I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna keep doing that maybe four or five times until I get a whole bunch of glue into that hole. And then I'm just gonna stick that dowel in and I'm gonna leave it. And I'm gonna take my other dowel and I'm gonna take some of this glue that didn't go in that hole. And I'm gonna stick it in here. This is not a time to be cheap on the glue. You gotta um, use as much glue as you have to use to get that hole filled. Okay. And then that's gonna go in like that. And then I'm pretty much going to leave those. I'm gonna take a regular, just a regular paper towel, and I'm going to clean up some of the places where there's excess glue came out. So help if you moved your, really help if you moved your piece of paper first. I'm gonna do that. Okay, clean up some of the glue there. And I got a big wad of glue up here don't really want my clamp to be glued onto my chair. Okay, just like that. Got a lot of right. So what you're gonna do now is you're going to just walk away. You're gonna leave this for 24 hours. You're gonna leave those dowels sticking out like that. Don't touch it. Come back tomorrow. Okay, so if you've waited for 24 hours and you can see here that the glue is clear. If you've waited for 24 hours, it's time to take your clamp off. So just pull your, uh, whatever your release is for your clamp. And I remember I sort of drilled into this one a little bit. That's okay. Now you'll see where it sticks out both sides. So that's a good mechanical joint. So what you want to do now is, um, you know, get something like a utility knife. Uh, these are razor sharp. So either this or uh, an X-Acto knife, something like that, that you can cut through these. And I'll show you, it's not, uh, it's not very difficult. Uh, if you just score it a little bit on the top and the bottom, and then make a little cut on the side and on the other side and then just sort of rock this back and forth it'll go right through okay so i'll show you again just score it Oop, i cut right through that time i didn't have to score it you know keep your hands out of the way because 
this will, this will, this will cut you very, very badly. Take it from the guy who's had lots of them. So, um, you can clean off any paint, or I shouldn't say paint, any, any glue if you want. This is actually not too bad, and it's pretty smooth. Uh, if you wanted to, of course, you could take a little piece of sandpaper and just smooth those off a little bit more. And you don't have to do a lot of sanding. This is an 80 grit. Okay, so you'll see those are the only two little spots, right? So if you had a, you, you can buy a, a marker, um, most hardware stores have little furniture touch-up markers you could use. I'm going to use just um, regular uh, India ink, because that's what I have. And I'm just gonna put a dot on there like that and a dot on there like that and maybe put a little bit more on there and then just um, rub it in and you'll see those pretty much disappear. And you could do some more on some more of those marks there and get rid of all of it. All right, so um, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're currently a subscriber, I thank you very much. And if you're not currently a subscriber, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you again next time.